Here's what we don't understand. We're like, I'm a good person. No, you're not. <laughs> Sorry to pop your bubble. So even if we're good, 99% of the time, that one flaw, that one error, that one issue that we keep doing qualifies us as evil. It's like the person who murders. You stand before the judge and the judge goes, hey, you're on trial for murder. What happened? They're like, yeah, but the 99 other good things I did, the judge is like, but you murdered somebody. It's like, yeah, but I'm a good person. Like, I love my kids. I love my wife. I go to work. I'm always on time. But you murdered somebody. That qualifies you as evil. And all these other good things don't matter if that's what, how the people on the earth judge us. How much more when we stand before God who we can't escape from, who doesn't have a corrupted justice system. And it says in Psalm 5, 4, For you are not a God who is pleased with wickedness. With you, evil people are not welcome. There was a point in history where we could not talk to God face to face. And it's hard to imagine because now we've been given such a grace, such access to God, that we don't understand what it's like to be apart from Him. God hates sin because sin is the expression of hatred toward God, whether we do it willfully or ignorantly. For He made Him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. What's it saying? This is leading up to why Jesus is abandoned. On the cross, it says He took our mess, our brokenness, our sin, and that was put on Him, and His righteousness was put on us. And if you know anything about ancient Israel, they used to have something called a scapegoat, and that's where we get the word today that we use. And there would be two goats, one would be sacrificed unto God, and the other one was called the scapegoat. And the high priest would put his hand on the scapegoat, and he would pray, and he would transfer all the sin of the people on this goat. And then he would send this goat outside of Israel and outside of the presence of God, outside the camp where it was not even close to God. And it represented that all of the sin had left Israel. Jesus was crucified outside of Jerusalem, outside of the camp, as our scapegoat and the Lamb of God. Because all our sin was put on him. At this point, when all the sin is put on him, it says that the sky was darkened. Because for the first time ever, there was a veil between the Father and the Son. For the first time ever, God the Father hid His face from God the Son. Because Jesus had to experience what separation from God felt like. So He was actually abandoned for that moment in history. And the darkened sky was the evidence. See, in the temple there was this veil that would separate what was called the most holy place from the holy place. And only the high priest could go in there once per year. And they had to make an atonement for themselves by sacrifice and by the shedding of blood. When Jesus died, that curtain tore from the top down to signify that God made a way for us through Jesus to have relationship, that that veil was gone. It was torn away. Jesus had to be abandoned. And here's why. The moment that God turned His face from His Son, He turned His face toward you. He turned His face toward me. Turn it from Jesus, who became sin for us. All the sin was put on Him. And He turned it toward us because now we have become the righteousness of God. He traded places. 